So I am Ben Porter. Uh, um, some of you probably know me. Actually, probably most of you know me um, in the bioengineering department as one of the uh, senior lecturers or the um, instructional faculty. Um, but I also um, am in charge, the program director, if you will, of the, the BE STARS program. Um, so STARS, it stands for our Summer Training and Research Scholars. Um, and I take the lead on organizing it and making sure everybody's in the right place at the right time and uh, all the logistics are happening correctly and, and everything along those lines. So if you have questions about it, I am the person to ask. Uh, I can usually direct you if I don't know, but most of the time I have a pretty good idea of what's been going on or what is going on. So let's start with a little bit about the basics. Um, so just breaking down into our normal five W's and an H. So the who, that would be you all. Um, this, this program is for pretty much anyone who is not graduating before the end of next uh, December. Um, so anyone who is gonna be a sophomore or a senior starting next fall, um, this is for you. So the only thing that we're really focus on is that you need to have above a 3.0 GPA. Um, and even then, if you're close on it, still I would apply um, and just make a good, good case for yourself. So it's not, don't think of it as an exact cutoff, but if you're if you're close to a 3.0, I would still apply. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a biomedical engineering major, uh, as long as your major is relatable to the research that you're interested in doing. So if you are interested in doing neural engineering and you're a neuroscience major, that's OK. That works. Um, so just kind of explain it a little bit when you are writing one of your essays. And we'll talk about that here a little later. Uh, I will say if you have any questions, please feel free to write them at any time in the chat. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat on my phone at the same time while doing this. Um, or try raising your hand. I think I'll be able to see that, too. Um, but other than that, I'll just keep going and we'll also have a, a session for Q&A at the end. OK, um, so the who pretty much everyone uh, who's an undergraduate. So we're trying to be pretty inclusive on this. The what? So this is a research intensive experience um, that emphasizes a lot on your skill development. And that's not just your bench skills, but also your soft skills. Um, it helps you to explore biomedical engineering. What I mean by that is that biomedical engineering is extremely broad. Uh, we have six different tracks in, in our program in itself, the, the fields that we study. Um, and there's much, much more beyond that. And uh, we also try to help you explore different career options while we're at it and, and help prepare you for grad school and, and that sort of thing. Uh, we also do emphasize on camaraderie. Um, so we do try to create an environment where we have a pretty good um, connection between our um, undergraduates, the master, or the graduate students who are offering as mentors or working as mentors, and our PIs. So we would try to make this a good cohort where you can get to know people a little bit better uh, and really have people that you relate to in the future, people that you can come back to in the future and, and talk to them years down the road type thing. The WEN, uh, this is a 10-week program, starts May 22nd and it ends July 28th. Um, we do expect you to be there five days a week. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the hours, stuff like that here coming up. Um, if you know that you need to miss a day or two for a vacation, um, we can work on that ahead of time. Um, but really, if you're going to be out for like two weeks, then that's probably not the best opportunity for you. Um, so. 10 weeks, it's fairly short uh, in the grand scheme of things. So it, it's pretty compact. That's about the average length of most of your REU summer uh, research experiences out there. Um, it's just because we have a fairly short summer, right? All right, so the where uh, here in Richardson, UT Dallas on the main campus, there is an opportunity with some labs that you might be working also in UT Southwestern uh, down in Dallas. Uh, depends on what the faculty is doing and in the collaborations and, and what they need. Uh, why would you want to do this? Experience. And I think most of you who are watching this or, or tuning in probably have a pretty good idea of why you want to do this already. Um, but when we say experience, it's lots of types of different experience. So yes, it does help build your resume, um, but it's also a good way to find out, do you really even want to go into research? Is this life for you? Is this the career path you want to do? Do you want to go to graduate school? Do you want to go to graduate school at UT Dallas? Um, so it's a great way to try out a lot of different things. 
So that's what we really hope that you will do. You'll come, you'll join us, you'll do some research. If it, if it suits you and you really like it, you'll continue doing research, continue growing with that faculty member, and maybe you'll even come back as a doctoral student or a master's student, right? Um, so that's one of our goals with this and should be combined with one of your goals. How do you apply? Um, so that link is it's a link to a Qualtrics uh, survey. It's a rather long link, so I didn't put it on here. But if you go to the bottom of our B stars page, uh, there's a link there that you just click. OK, so I'm going to jump into a few questions, which I think tend to come up a lot. Um, first one being, what is the research like? What are you actually going to be doing on a day to day basis? Um, so we do have 21 tenure tenure track faculty who are doing research and that's the six different areas I was talking about the bioimaging biomaterials biomechanics biosensors and bioelectronics and neuron engineering and systems bi biology okay as you can imagine systems biology needs are going to be very different from say bioimaging or biomechanics right systems biology you'll probably be doing cell cultures or potentially you could be doing cell cultures um things along those lines right if I'm looking into bioimaging, I may be working with fMRI or ultrasound or a variety of different pieces of equipment. Uh, I may even be doing 3D imaging. Um, biomaterials, I may never ever touch a cell or a living organism, but instead maybe testing tensile strength of certain materials or something along those lines. So it's actually really hard for us to say what the research is like because it's so broad. Um, there are many different things that you can find. And what I would really suggest is for really? the research, um, look up the current research that's going on. So that's that link that's given there, um, the B-E-U-T dollars to E-D-U slash research. Uh, if you just go to our normal bioengineering webpage, you'll find the research tab at the top of the, the page. Um, click on that and you can see the six different areas. Go into each area, see what research finds sounds interesting, uh, and then try to uh, match up with that faculty member. Okay, uh, you can even reach out to them ahead of time to discuss a little bit of what their research is if you want to. That that's perfectly acceptable. Um, but the best way to figure out what it is that you would be doing would be to go and and look at the research that they're actually doing currently, um, because that's much like what you would be doing. Um, there is something for pretty much everyone. Uh, depending on whatever interest you have, there is probably someone doing research that needs you. Um, so check it all out. There's a lot to take in there. Like I said, 21 different faculty members. There's a lot of projects going on and some have multiple projects. Um, so they may need someone who's more into electrical or someone who's more into doing surgeries or something like depending on the person and what they're doing, multiple needs. Okay. Um, scholars will have their own piece of a project, so it's not like you're just getting us, we're assigning you busy work. Um, you will be doing part of your own, uh, part of, you will be doing your own piece of a project. Um, so this is something that you can take ownership of. Uh, some people have actually published papers based on the work that they've done with their internships, the summer internships here with us. Um, you will have a graduate student mentor, which we'll talk about a little bit again here in the future. Uh, and then you'll have your lab, your, your lab's primary investigator. So that's the faculty member. We'll also call them PI for short. Um, so your primary interaction will probably be with a student mentor. They will give you your day to day guidance and kind of answer any questions for you. But then you'll also have access to the, the PI um, who can help you out with everything you might need there. OK. All right, so I was a little bit on the research. So is there financial support available? Uh, yes, absolutely. So each of our best scholars will receive a $6,000 stipend um, total for the summer. Uh, it'll be broken up in three payments over, over, I think it's about the three months that we go for. So, um, and that's to help cover, you know, your, your room and board. Um, if you have to travel from here or travel to here, that's supposed to help cover with that and any other normal expenses. There are housing, parking, dining plans and all sorts of stuff available on campus. Uh, and if you get accepted into the program, we'll, we'll definitely share that information with you. Um, but we're not restricting you to just being on campus. So if you find cheaper housing elsewhere, you can fully go for it, right? Um, but that $6,000 stipend, that's that covers everything for you. 
And then each scholar will also have $500 for lab supplies. Um, so that's devoted to your actual research. So if you need to go out and buy a bunch of beakers or something like that, or uh, reagents, that's what that $500 is for. All right, so what is the schedule actually like? Um, that is set by your PI and you. Some PIs prefer that you're for there from nine to five, kind of the normal working hours. Um, some let you choose your own hours. So you go in when it's convenient for you. Maybe you don't even get there until 10, right? Or 11 or whatever. Um, sometimes the, the hours will go into the evening depending on the experiment. Some experiments can last for a long time and they need somebody there monitoring them the whole time. Um, so really there's there needs to be flexibility in there. Um, but you'll you'll find out more about that when you get matched with the PI. We do expect a minimum of 40 hours of, for the research each week. So this is this is a full time job, basically. Um, the reason being that it is a short program, right? It's only those 10 weeks long. So you have a lot to do within those 10 weeks. So the minimum of 40 hours is really to get you engaged. And so you can get the most out of it. If you spend longer, fantastic, whatever you need to do. Um, but that minimum of 40 hours is really to help you get the most that you can get out of the experience. We don't want you to have any other job conflicting with your time on this. Um, same with the class commitments. Um, primarily just because you need to be able to, to commit to the actual research. Okay. If you are taking like a single class or something like that, then sometimes we can work something out. You just need to let us know ahead of time. But most definitely not doing a full load at the same time as doing the STARS program. We do also have regularly scheduled uh, faculty lunches and lab tours. Uh, that is so you can get to know more of the research that's going on at UTD and with, within our biomedical engineering. So each week we would have a different faculty member present and then go take a look at their lab and the research that's going on. Uh, we will also have social hours. Um, this is actually the picture on here is one of our social hours um, where we we do all sorts of things really. Sometimes we can go and maybe we'll go to Northside, which is we saw some pictures on the previous slide from Northside. Uh, we'll hang out there with the graduate students or sometimes we'll have these little challenges or, or get to know each other type games that we do amongst the scholars. Um, the particular challenge that we're looking at here, the students all built foil or built boats out of foil and then we put weights in them. And I seriously underestimated how much the boats could hold and we exceeded my weights. So we had to start grabbing office supplies. So the boat here is actually full of, you can't really tell, I don't think, but has creamers. There's two staplers in there, um, some notepads. We just started piling it in, which is probably why some of the staplers were wet and some of the faculty who we share the office with weren't too happy, but that's okay. Um, and then we also have weekly graduate student Q and A's. So we'll get together with our graduate student mentors, the whole group, um, and we'll break out into little time and smaller sessions and basically have questions and answers with them. We'll have a topic that we'll cover each week. It might be applying to graduate school or what is graduate school like, or how do you get a grant or whatever. We'll, we'll have several topics that we'll present at the beginning of the semester. So you'll know what's going on ahead of time. Um, but that's really meant for you to get that foresight into getting into graduate school, getting into research and all of that. And it's also meant to also help you build that network with those graduate students. So again, focusing on that cohort building. Uh, and then finally, to cap everything off on July 28th, which is that last day of our program, uh, we have the UTD student or sorry, summer platform for undergraduate research or our SPUR. Uh, this is our second year doing this. This is a campus wide event. And it is a poster presentation um, and there are cash awards that can come with it or scholarships that come with it. So the posters are judged, which is something that you can say on your resume. The posters got judged um, and it's usually 100 to 200 dollars for those who win. Um, main thing is this is a very large group. I think last year we had something like 200 undergraduates who were presenting. So this is a real large poster presentation experience. It's it's fantastic. Uh, went very well last year. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Um, and you can get some great feedback from our judges and the people who come and look at your poster. So good experience there. Okay. Let me pause for a second. Are there any questions? Not seeing any being typed. 
Let me see if I can pull up my chat on here again. I don't see any hands up. All right, Ruby. So what do you need to do to apply? Um, well, as I said, so go to the apply now link at the bottom of the BSTARS webpage. Uh, it will take you to a Qualtrics survey where you just fill out the form. Pretty easy. Um, a couple of highlights and tips. Look at what is needed before you begin the actual survey. So you can open up the link, go into it, and, and see everything that you need to get ahead of time. Um, it does not save, though. So when you get like halfway down and realize that you need to write an essay or something like that, and you have to get out of it so you can go write the essay, it's not going to save. So try to get all that material ready ahead of time. Um, when we ask for your research experience, any previous research experience, that doesn't have to be just within a faculty member's lab. So that can also be research that you've done in classes, for example. Um, so in our first year project, or sorry, our, our Beeman 1100, there's some experiments that we did. You can list that, you can talk about it. If you did um, science fair during high school and did it competitively and you did really well, you can talk about that too. Uh, so we really are just looking for any research that you've done, any type of experiments, projects, anything like that. Feel free to talk about it, list it. Um, if you can avoid leaving it blank, I would. You're going to be asked to rank order the PIs you'd like to work with. So that's three that we're asking you to rank order. So go back to that research page that I was mentioning earlier and look at their projects, figure out who you would like to work with the most, which projects sound the most interesting, uh, and then rank order them and we'll do our best to match when we can. Uh, you will need to have your unofficial transcript, uh, resume or CV, curriculum vitae, uh, a statement of interest for participating in the STARS program, and a statement about your long-term career goals prepared. So have that already. You can just copy and paste it into the boxes and it'll make life easier. But those are the sorts of things that you're going to need when you're filling this out. And then finally, you're going to need two letters of reference or two references. Let me try that again. You will need to provide two references that we will contact and ask for letters of reference from. Um, give them notice early, like right now, if you can, because the end of the month comes up fast. You need to give them at least two weeks notice, if not three. Um, and sometimes a lot of the same faculty at UT Dallas get picked to, to do those. So let them know early um, and let them get going on that. Okay. Um, for the two references, at least one needs to be a faculty member from your institute. So that, if that's UT Dallas or if you're applying from off campus, um, you need to have at least one faculty member who will provide a reference for you. And then apply by January 31st. So that's our hard cutoff. Um, after that, we won't be taking any more applications. OK. So why biomedical engineering at UTD? Why the SPUR, not the SPUR program, why the B-STARS? program at um, UTD. Well, we have top tier faculty with $14.7 million in research expenditures last year, uh, and most of them all have several collaborations. So that's not just with UT Southwestern, but also with different companies, uh, with different departments or other schools on campus. So there's a lot of opportunity to branch out and explore different areas with many of our faculty. We do have those six broad research areas that we talked about earlier, and they are broad. They cover a large swath of what biomedical engineering can include. Uh, we do focus partially on preparing our students for graduate school and professional life. So it's not that you are only getting research out of this program. You're also getting career preparation out of this program. We do strive to provide you with a, a networked cohort between our scholars, mentors, and PIs. So we work really hard to make sure that everybody's interconnected so that you can refer back to them in the future. We do provide opportunities to improve your presenting skills and your other soft skills. So you will be doing weekly lab meetings, most likely with whatever lab you join. I'm sure throughout those, you'll be having to present your research, maybe even giving updates weekly. Um, and then you will definitely have a poster presentation at the end of the, the experience. We will be training our mentors. We are not just throwing you in with graduate students and saying, here, talk to them. We will actually be training your mentors as we go. Um, so they will be learning more and more about mentorship and how to provide you with that better experience as they go. 
And then uh, if you're not from the Dallas area, we are centrally, centrally located with a lot of things going on. There's a lot of cool things to check out here, usually within an hour or two. Uh, you can get to downtown Dallas, uh, taking the dart rail at a fairly reasonable speed and, and time. Um, and you can get access to their Dallas World Aquarium, which is really cool. Big fan of that one. The Perot Museum, Bass Hall, which has a lot of musicals and bands and things like that. Our, our Arboretum, lots of different things. Um, and we have some pretty cool food. And we just like to have fun. Um, so that's another one of our challenges where they exceeded my weights pretty quickly, where they had a sheet of foil and they had to make a support for it. Uh, and as you can see, that one is now holding 35 pounds, which seems insane to me. But that's okay. That was really awesome. Um, I think that was our winning structure too. But we 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 will have fun. I can guarantee you that. Okay. Um, that being all said, those are my FAQs. I would like to turn to two of our scholar alums, uh, Akila Shrinavaz and Gary Nair. Um, I am going to stop presenting, and we will take a look at them and ask them some questions. All right, Akila and Gary, are you here? Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. All right, Akila, are you here? Yes, I see you too. Yes. Awesome. Well, um, could you all start off just by telling us about your research experience, uh, what it was beforehand, what you did, um, what it was like, that sort of kind of just broad overview of what it was like being a scholar. Uh, and Gallery, I see your picture on top, so why don't we start with you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll also turn my camera on so you don't have to feel lonely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you. we go. Um, so before I did my uh, REU, I worked in three different labs. I worked in Dr. Lamada's lab, Dr. Voigt's lab, and um, and now Dr. Jones's lab. So I actually worked on two different labs before coming to Dr. Jones's lab. Um, and I have been doing research since I was a freshman and I kind of felt like, oh, this is a really good time to like force myself to have way more time to focus on research that I want to do. And that was perfect um, with the RU because now like school and classes won't get in the way. Um, I had like full time, like 40 hour a week to kind of work on research. So, yeah, that's kind of uh, my background. Um, I did material science and biophysics related research, but I wanted to focus more on biology. And so that's why I chose Dr. Jones for um, my um, lab. So, yeah. And then what were you doing kind of on the day to day? Just like what was the actual research you were doing? <laughs> yeah, so in Dr. Jones's lab in the beginning, I definitely started out with a lot of like um, definitely reading up on articles and stuff, because as I didn't have that bio heavy background as like maybe uh, my partner in that lab did, um, I definitely felt like I was a little behind. So definitely in the beginning, I would read up on a lot of literature. I would watch a lot of lectures and immunology crash courses. Um, that's definitely what I did day to day in the beginning. And then I transitioned to actually like wet lab and bench related stuff. And so I was working with uh, enzymes and cancer related enzymes specifically because that was my like original passion when I joined like biomedical engineering. And um, so, yeah, I was focusing on over regulated enzymes in cancers and kind of just working about that and helping with um, like writing for papers for my PI as well as my mentor and um, also kind of attending talks and kind of just um, networking with people that my mentor knew to like kind of get myself involved in several different projects. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and Akila? Yeah, so um, I started working as an undergrad research assistant um, December of 2021 in Dr. Faye's quantitative bioimaging lab. Um, and this is where um, I kind of jump started my research. Um, and I joined a project with my PhD mentor um, on a project focused on hyperspectral imaging. So I'd say in the beginning, um, since I was like 
very new to everything. Um, I was tasked with reading a lot of research papers about the project and reading a lot of literature. And um, then as I became more familiar with the, the concepts and what um, the project was um, focused on, I started um, getting tasked with helping design and build um, the imaging system that the lab was working on and then also learning about uh, MATLAB programming, which I found to be very useful for some of my other classes as well. Cool. And would you all say that reading the papers, how did that go from the beginning versus now? <laughs> um, I think in the beginning it was kind of daunting because I hadn't really read a lot of like immunology centered papers um, until I got to Dr. Jones's lab and I think um, it was definitely more digestible than like material science related papers that I was reading in my previous lab so I was happy about that but like still like it takes a while to kind of get into the terminology that's like frequently discussed I think one word that I um, kind of kept seeing over and over again was um like over regulated and it makes sense in my brain like what that means but kind of related to cancer is kind of what I had to teach myself about and like words like that like jargon I picked up more and more and so reading papers became easier um once I had more practice doing it like you have to keep reading even no matter how daunting it is like you have to get used to it and read more and more um to like get how they work and how they're structured and the words they use because it's not always like you know your um layman language you know it it it, it most of the times isn't so you have to kind of get used to get used to that. Um, and yeah, I would agree with that as well. Um, it was definitely very difficult for me at first because um, I had no experience reading um, like educational work like that. So it was kind of a lot at first. I didn't really understand a lot of what was going on, but my mentor actually um, was very helpful in the sense that anything I didn't understand that she would she would explain um, and other people in the lab would as well. And I think just with practice and um, continuing to read just for um, learning more about the topic over time, it got easier to understand what the papers were talking about. Awesome. And you kind of already covered this a little bit when you were talking about how did you how did you decide on which labs you wanted to apply to? Um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I wanted a more biology focus because I feel like um, with my material science lab and the biophysics labs, it was definitely um, very like engineering kind of focus, at least the roles that I took on in the lab. Um, and so I wanted to get a little bit more emphasis on the bio and biomedical engineering. And that's kind of the main reason I I chose Dr. Jones's lab. And I definitely did feel like a fish out of water in the lab because um, it just I felt like I was bringing really engineering heavy like background for a lab that was very bio focused. Um, but I, I really learned a lot and I learned that like wet bench stuff is something that I am very much interested in. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of just broadened like my set of skills. So I, I really appreciate um, that about why about the lab that I chose. So. Um, I'd say I kind of didn't really know what field I was specifically interested in, like in the bioengineering space. So. Um, I kind of reached out to the research committee of Biomedical Engineering Society, um, and I think they were really helpful in the fact that they have a lot of information sessions and events about um, the research on campus, research off campus, and things like that. And I think I attended an event that was um, hosted by the professor I'm now working with and um, learned about this, the field of bioimaging, and that's when I got really interested and applied for um, his lab. So. I'd say that um, like BMES is a great tool to use um, for learning about research. If you kind of are in a place where like you kind of have no idea where to go or you don't know what you're interested in, because they have a lot of informational events on um, how to kind of figure out what you want to do um, in your undergrad career. Okay. So would you say that um, after the RU, did anything really 
I don't want to say come of it because that's kind of sounds wrong, but did anything come of it? Did I, <laughs> are you still working in the labs? Um, did you happen to have any other posters or authorships or anything like that? What were there any results after having participated in the REU? Um, so I was working in the lab for a couple more months after, and I still am kind of involved with it, but I think I shifted my focus a little bit more into industry because um, I did want to check that out as well. And so I got a clinical trial internship at MedPace, which is a CRO, and I've been wanting to work with them for so long. And I would say my REU like definitely helped me like land that job because I remember during the interview, she was like, oh, you did an REU? I did an REU as well. And that was like a talking point that we had. Um, so I think that was really, really beneficial that I had that because she also did her REU at her college itself. Because I know it's possible to do an REU like outside of your college. Um, but yeah, I definitely encourage like, e e like if when you're at UTD, like you have to take advantage of the RU that UTD offers itself um, because it's it's just so awesome because those faculty members that you make a connection with, you can continue that connection with them when school starts. But that's a little bit difficult for you to do that when you go to RUs like out of state or different colleges, right? And so that was a talking point that we had and I'm really like happy that the RU like helped me um, like achieve that, so yeah. Um, yeah, the RU experience was definitely very valuable. Um, I Since the poster itself, publishing the poster at the end of the summer, um, I think that was definitely a very good experience overall, just learning about kind of how those type of events go and getting prepared for public speaking and um, skills like that. And in my lab, yeah, I was working, um, I think, a couple of months before RU, and I ended up choosing the same lab just kind of kind of to stick with the same thing I was doing kind of because our project was very long um, and and I wanted to stay on that project. And I think that was a good decision because now I'm um, currently in the process of publishing a paper with my PhD mentor um, for the SBIE conference this year. So I think that was definitely a very good outcome from the RU because I we put in a lot of time during my RU experience for this project. Um, and I think that helped me kind of land a role as a co-author um, on her paper. And it's definitely been a good experience to talk about um, at interviews as well. Um, I feel like people, when they see that on your resume, they usually always tend to ask about that first. So I think that was, um, it's been a great, a valuable experience and definitely beneficial for my career. It's awesome. So what was your favorite part of the REU? Um, I think for me, it was um, being in, being able to be in a lab space for like 40 hours a week, like how I said earlier. Um, I think the thing that made me really upset about the labs that I would work with previously, pre like prior to the REU, is that classes would get in the way, homework, projects, like everything would get in the way so I couldn't focus on the research itself like I felt like I would have to only be able to dedicate like six to ten hours at most but with the REU I could focus on my research and my project for so long and I really liked that because it wouldn't interrupt like my flow when I was reading papers coming up with ideas like I could sit there in one place and like think of things and work on them right then and there. And I really, really, really like that a lot. That was like one of my favorite parts of the REU that I just got to dedicate my time for like, like weeks um, to do what I was passionate about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just going to jump off that as well. I think that um, is a good point. Like before the REU, I still had school and classes and I think that always used to interfere with um, trying to get more experience in the lab and trying to learn more about the project I was working on. But finally, like during the summer, we got to dedicate all of our time to the project. And I think that's when I got like the most like hands on involved and also learned the most during that time um, about my lab itself and my project and other people's projects as well. Um, getting kind of the experience and also getting a feel for what's what I'm actually doing um, and spending time to understand what I'm actually doing. I think that was like a great part of the um, RU experience. And I think just meeting um, the people that there's new people in my lab that came in just for the RU 
program and that was a great experience as well kind of connecting with new people from different schools um and yeah cool i'll try not to be offended that nobody said the program director but that's all right <laughs> um do you have any advice for students who are currently applying for the reu um, I know the deadline's on January 31st, so I'm not going to say like, oh, join a lab right now and get research experience if you haven't already, because um, that just doesn't make sense. But I will say that the World Wide Web is available to you and reading literature um, about any professor that you're interested in um, before like applying, um, I think is so, so, so important. Um, I think it gives you a little bit of a leg up and you kind of already understand a little bit about what they're doing so that you can come in with questions to ask for your PI or your mentor so that you can like get started on the project that you want to do and like kind of find your niche um, maybe a little bit before um, by reading literature and getting like acclimated to the jargon and stuff that might be used in the lab. So I think that's really, really important. Yeah, and um, I would say kind of even if you don't have like a specific interest or you don't even know if research is the path you want to go on, I would still encourage applying. I think it has a lot of benefits. Um, just learning about that side of um, just the research side, just how these labs work and um, how you can get involved in a project and you can kind of explore your interests um, in these different labs. And I would say kind of like even on the bioengineering department website, you can easily search through the labs and search through the research that's currently being done. Um, so I would definitely do that before choosing kind of your top three labs um, for the application. But I would suggest honestly everyone, even if you're not really sure about research to apply and, and see if this, if you get in, if this experience, um, I think it's a good experience to have and to talk about at future careers um, and future events. Awesome. All right, well, those are all the questions I have. So let's open up and see, does anyone who's on here with us have a question that they'd like to ask? You can either raise your hand or type it in the chat or no, anything. another second or so oh uh what year oh wow okay i should have waited longer uh first question uh what year are you both and would you participate in an reu again um i'm graduating in spring so no i can't participate in an reu again but if i could i would because it was just a lot of fun and it just gave me a lot of experience that i was very very grateful for I'm currently a junior um, and yeah, I would. I think it was um, a great experience. It taught me a lot um, and definitely gave me a lot of skills I can carry with throughout my professional career. Awesome, okay. Any, any piece of advice that you can give uh, to apply? Um, yeah, I think like how, what me and Killa said like about reading up on, the professors you want to apply to. And if you found one you like, you can read their research and kind of just know like what they're doing. So um, you you can understand like what your passion is and what you're passionate about. Yeah, I would just go kind of agree with the same thing. Just kind of have some background on the labs that you're applying for, just so it seems like you're actually you should be more in, more interested than just surface level um, information about what the lab's doing and kind of um, just show that you're more interested in kind of taking on a specific project or a specific topic and things like that. And I would say just as one of the people who's reviewed a lot of the applications, be sure you actually fill everything out. <laughs> um, don't just give a sentence for an answer on what do you plan on doing in the future? Like give us some thought and, and write a paragraph or so. Um, but those those tend to work better. 
All right, the next question from Adi, uh, how many spots do you have for scholars? I, we are planning on 10 right now. So we're looking for 10. Okay, Sophia, since the deadline is January 31st and the research takes place from late May to late July, uh, when do people usually hear back if they get in? Um, we're working on that one actually. So it's kind of done in rounds sometimes. Um, so we'll make some offers uh, and depending on if people accept them or not, we'll make a second round of offers. So it kind of stretches out a bit, uh, but we're planning on probably getting that first round out, I would say mid-February. Um, and it, there are a lot of things that affect that because we also have to talk with the faculty, do some matching, but our goal is about mid-February. Okay. Um, and then for letters of recs, what are other exa what are examples other than faculty members that you can ask? Um, Keila Gauri, do you want to attempt on that one or? Um, I had an on-campus job. I worked at the OIT department, so I asked my manager from there. So I guess if you have like a job, whether on campus or off campus, maybe you can ask your your manager, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I had, I was a teaching intern for a class, um, I believe last fall, and I asked my um, professor in that class for um, a letter break. I guess that's still faculty, but it was kind of outside of the classes I took since I was actually working for them. But yeah, I would say maybe someone like that would be a good um, person too. Good, and then if you have also, uh, if you, are in any student organizations and you work a lot with the, the sponsor for the student organization. I can't remember what they're actually called, but the advisor, um, they can sometimes write you a letter. If you've done previous uh, like uh, science fairs or anything like that, or you have a previous science teacher, uh, you can use you could use them. Um, pretty much anybody you can talk about your skills as a researcher or as a worker, uh, your commitment levels, that sort of thing. Um, wouldn't go with family members, but um, definitely people who can just more talk about your personality and, and your, your commitment levels. So that can be a lot of different people. Okay, uh, Fatima, can you guys briefly explain what are RAUs? Okay, so um, we keep throwing around the term RAU. So RAU is actually Research Experience for Undergraduate, which is, is what that stands for. Um, REUs specifically are funded by NSF, the National Science Foundation. Um, everybody usually defaults to calling their summer research programs REUs just because it's kind of the, a common term. Um, but ours is technically not an REU because it's not funded by the NSF. So it's the, the BSTARS program. But it is a summer research program where you go, you can either go to your university or a different university uh, and you, you conduct research there over the span of a couple of months uh, and it's to get that experience. Um, Zat, do you have anything you would want to add to that? Um, I guess for me, I saw of it as like an internship, but during research, that's basically how I see it. Cause you're still working like 40 hour weeks during that summertime. And yeah, that's kind of how I see it. It's a good description. Yeah, I would agree. That's kind of how I saw it too. Good, yeah, good description. Okay, I think that was everything in the queue. Any other questions? So usually I get the little dot dots when somebody's typing, but there's no dots and I don't know. All right. Well, I think if I don't see any pop up here in the next second or two, we'll go ahead and call it. Uh, I know we're all still on winter break, so go back to sleeping or playing video games or whatever it is y'all are doing. Um, uh, almost got out. <laughs> How big is the applicant pool usually considering only 10 people are chosen? Um, that's a good question. So last year we had a slightly bigger um, group that we could have we could take, and I think that was about 80. We had 80 applicants for that one last year. Uh, between 80 and 100, which I don't remember the exact number. Um, so, and about half of those were from off campus. Um, so, if that makes a difference, I'm not sure for you, but uh, that's that's about how many we had going last year. 
OK. Well, um, if you have any further questions, uh, I'll hang out for another minute or two after I turn off the recording. Um, Akila, Gowry, thank you for joining us. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, Y'all's perspectives are much better than I could give on my own, so it's really helpful. Um, and yeah, anyone else? Feel free to ask questions. You can always type to me. Uh, type to me. You can always write me an email uh, and ask questions that way too. But on that, hope we'll see you all apply and have a great rest of your break, everyone. Thank you.